Gwydwen, the half-elf speaking to the magical <laughs> wizard in space and the, the end of the world. Hey! Good morning. Good morning. It's another Thursday and we are Tentacle Quill. I am Ducky, this is Claire, and we are going to talk to you today about... Just, Just as, as you, you are. are. And we're going to talk about some writing lessons out of it. Yes. Wow, ah, that's the first time we're doing this. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to figure out... First of all, let's, let, let's talk about this book um, briefly. Mm-hmm. So we picked it up in Puerto Rico at a friend's wedding. Mm-hmm. I devoured it. The interesting thing that we, we want to talk about here mm. is... Um, it, it, the best way to s- express this mm-hmm. is it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice in a but modern queer. setting, but queer. Yeah. And it's a very light, fun read. It doesn't mean it's not without emotional oh, no, stakes. It's very, it, it, the cast all works at a, a queer mm-hmm. publication, online publication. Yes, they all work. And yes. it yeah. was bought out mm-hmm. uh, by two powerful rich lesbians. And um, Well, the tagline is basically... Anything worse than ha- hating, hating your boss is being attracted to her. The core struggle mm-hmm. that we wanted to talk about, because mm-hmm. we want to use these books as... A discussion point for writing and narrative stuff is the main character struggles with writing fluff yes or, or being a fluff writer someone who can write things that makes people very happy but it's mm-hmm. maybe not literature she starts out at a meeting being somewhat embarrassed by the fact that she's a fluff writer yeah. to going oh i should finally take the the, the time to write this big novel this autobiographical novel that that she wants to write literally in the opening yes. chapter she mm-hmm. thinks that the disaster of her work shutting down is going to finally give her the opportunity to write her magnum, magnum yes. opus yes. and i think this is a, a problem that a lot of writers have is they mm-hmm. they feel they need a disaster they yes. need to become a monk they need to like mm-hmm. move into the hills and they'll yes. finally write that great novel that they were wanting to write. Well, and I yeah. think it's kind of misguided. It's very misguided. Um, we both are self-published authors. Mm. And one of the things... I, I wrote my first book when I was in full-time work. It's tough because, like, you, you've got to maintain that, that energy. But I think yeah. one of the nice things about maintaining that energy is yes. if you're writing fluff... Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> First of all, you're much more likely to have already written fluff, right? You're much more likely to have Mm -hmm. done um, fanfic, role play, silly stories with your friends. This is the thing that sometimes people kind of try to gatekeep, like, oh, they write fanfic, that's not really writing, or, oh, they do Mm. this kind of writing, that's not really writing, not realizing that it's all perfectly valid writing. Now, that doesn't mean that, like, you're off the hook for writing good stuff. Like no. the the this is a very well edited book. Um, the author works at, as an editor at a publication mm-hmm. house, and it shows. Um, you know, in in the afterward, she says like her first draft was what a hundred thousand words or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was really long. Yes. She, she she cut it down a lot. So it doesn't mean that it isn't well crafted, right? I mm-hmm. think that's the other that's the other end of the spectrum is people. People get into the sort of fanfic NaNoWriMo mindset mm. and they're just like, we're going to write, 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 write and we're not going to edit, 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 edit. This is the thing I only just realized. I have just about finished my degree in creative writing and I have really noticed that my writing speeds have going have been going down. Like yeah. My records used to be, my top record was 11,000 words in one day, 9,000 words overnight, which mm. we will not be talking about right words now. Words for the word, God. <laughs> oh, gosh. But now I, I struggle to get 2,000 good ones out, and I think that's just a byproduct of writing good stuff. Like... I think that's somewhat cyclical, though, because yeah? I think I think you go through a phase where mm-hmm. you're feeling very confident in your writing and you're mm-hmm. more productive, and I think this is any creative endeavor. Yes. Um, and then you get into a more critical phase. Obviously, like, having been doing your master's the last mm-hmm. year and talking a lot more about literature, yes. you're going to be in a more critical phase. That's true, that's true. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's that cycle of growth, really. It's that cycle of growth. Yeah, I think my speed might pick up a bit. I don't know. Let's, let's see how NaNoWriMo goes this year. It's only six weeks to NaNoWriMo. It's only six weeks to NaNoWriMo. Um, so... 
yeah, the main thing we mm. wanted to get across with this, our, our first thing is is not to be intimidated no. by the need to write literature. Indeed. Um, to discover the quality in fluff mm-hmm. um, and, and to provide to provide some tips for it. I mean, we, we will dive into specific topics over future episodes about genre mm-hmm. fiction and things like that. But I think too often when people set up to discuss writing, the, the, the first sort of um, inklings are towards the oldies. People try to, especially new writers, try to um, compare themselves to the, the people that they read. And that's why it's really important to just find a community mm. of people who are on your level. Yeah. Just find a community of writers. It's it's the hardest thing about writing because we're all goblins who like to hide the tapes <laughs> with our keyboards. But once you yeah. have a community, you can keep each other accountable, you can discuss your work, you mm. can compare. It also helps you grow. And, like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be queer mud. For mm-hmm. us, it's, in this case, it's queer mud. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be uh, lit RPGs. Mm-hmm. It can be just something you're Narrative obsessed games. and interested with. It's mm. write what you know, because we not only have a queer person writing this, mm. she is also an editor, and... It's just very clear from how she writes that she knows this world, mm. and that's kind of great. But it's also yeah. there's so many moments in this that, like, mm-hmm. if you're in that mind, you mm-hmm. immediately identify with mm-hmm. it. It emotionally like sets the tone for you. It's very easily and relatable, mm. right? Indeed. If you're writing about Goodwin the half elf speaking to the magical <laughs> wizard in space and the the end of the world, the truth is that. Unless you're a very strange person, you probably don't have much to pull out of the well of experience on that. Especially if you're a new writer. I think this is the other thing, right? Is mm-hmm. is it's very easy for us to wrap ourselves mm-hmm. in the defense of fiction, mm-hmm. um, and, and yet some of the most true writing we do mm-hmm. from experience. And uh, what was that? We were, there was a context the other day where we had that quote: "The autobio fuel." Ah, which yes. I love. So this this is full of that, and I think if you're writing this sort of this mud, and mm-hmm. the other thing you've got friends who are in that mud already, who mm-hmm. you can sort of throw the book at, and they'll be interested in it because they're interested in that mud. It also yeah. helps you know your work better because you will be able to explain who this work is for when you know what you're writing. You'll mm-hmm. just be able to say it's for people like me, young queer professionals, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. If you're still looking for an agent or a publisher, having that deep knowledge of your own work will make their job easier, which makes your job easier. It's also, frankly, easier to market Indeed. your first book yes. if you've got a uh, background mm-hmm. in the thing. Yeah. Like, you know, as I said, the easiest book for us to sell was your mm-hmm. most recent one, and that's mm-hmm. the only one that we, we've like been in our own mud for, yes. basically. But um, yeah, this was this was uh, just as you are uh, mm-hmm. by Camille Kellogg. Um, it was a lovely, lovely find, and uh, the whole time gripping the book. Yep. We we talked a lot about this book as I read it, and, and then yeah, as you yeah. read it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's the thing we wanted to talk about is writing queer mud. We definitely recommend you check it out. And yeah, if um, you're writing yeah. a short story or a mm-hmm. novel or anything, yeah. um, feel comfortable writing that mud. And also, your writing is valid no matter Mm. what it is. Even Mm. if you're just writing about what you feel is the most niche thing, as long as it comes from yourself, it is valid writing. And, like, it's probably less niche than you think, right? If you are involved in a hobby with other Mm -hmm. people, immediately you have an audience there. It doesn't have to be an international audience or whatever, but, like, if you were in, I don't know, the Guildford Cat Groomer Society... And you wrote about cat grooming. You know, at least in your little group of people, mm-hmm. there is a group of people who might find something Indeed. that they can Indeed. identify to. And yeah, and there's a bunch of zines around these days. They're very fun to write for as mm. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing for zines mm-hmm. is fun. Yeah. And the other thing I'd strongly encourage is if you're doing writing in some mm-hmm. format, online, in a forum, um, in cat hair, whatever, don't worry about it in the sense of, you can edit it and repackage it into a more commercial thing. Also, yeah, don't be discouraged. There are places to go. 
Yeah. And, uh, and other writers, if you find them, they're very helpful. They will always be happy to share tips and tricks with you. So, you know, write so, that mud. Closing out, we don't really have much to promote at the moment other than uh, this podcast, the yes. Turn to Cool Girl that we're on. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other stuff we will talk about in the future. The main thing is every week we want to bring you a short discussion about a singular book mm-hmm. and then some related writing topic. So, yeah. Look forward to our special guest, Fluffy McFluffly, mm-hmm. face here. Vertex. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been Claire. I am Ducky. And I hope you enjoy writing. Have a good day.